Human error in surgery is a well-recognized phenomenon. This video highlights standardized critical patient safety checks and precautions that will prevent error, enhance team communication, improve quality, and promote patient safety in the operating room. Over the next few minutes, we will review key safety procedures to be followed before, during, and following neurosurgery. Prior to surgery, an anesthesiologist sees the patient in a pre-op screening clinic and conducts a comprehensive history and physical examination. The anesthesiologist reviews the surgical procedure. medications, allergies, and appropriate laboratory and imaging studies to determine if the patient is able to undergo the planned surgical procedure. The anesthesiologist also identifies any anesthetic risk with the patient as part of the informed consent process. The anesthesiologist needs to be aware of the patient positioning specifics of the surgical approach, the location of the lesion and adjacent anatomy, and any problems that could occur during the procedure. The surgeon marks the site in the pre-op holding area. Prior to the surgery, a nurse and anesthesiologist greet the patient in a holding area. The nurse checks the patient's name and allergy ban, confirms the patient's consent to the surgery, verifies that the site mark matches the consent form, and reviews all other critical documentation. The attending anesthesiologist reviews the information collected in the preoperative screening session. An IV is placed and a sedative may be given to ease the patient's anxiety. The process is the same for cranial, spinal, and other neurosurgical procedures. When the patient enters the operating room, the nurse assists with transferring and securing the patient into place on the OR table. The anesthesiologist applies the monitoring equipment to the patient and the induction of anesthesia begins. These leads need to come north if indicated, the neurophysiologist places the monitoring equipment on the patient. Following intubation, the surgeon places the patient in the correct position for surgery. As soon as the patient is secured in place, the timeout begins with each member of the surgical team introducing themselves with their full name and role. This is a timeout for patient Jane Doe. Medical record number is 1234567A. The surgery being performed is a right-sided lumbar 5 to sacral 1, mini open transframinal lumbar interbody fusion with pedicle screws, placement of rods, and use of iliac crest autograft. Is the consent form correct? Yes. The patient was allergic to penicillin. We will use vancomycin 1 gram IV. The patient is positioned prone on the Jackson table. Let's verify the site marking is on the right side L5S1. We will be using 5.5 millimeter titanium pedicle screws and peak cage with expandable tubular retractor. Do we have this in the room? Yes. C-arm is in the room. We have a type and screen for blood and I expect the blood loss to be 300 cc's. The case will take approximately three hours the critical steps in this case are expected to be nerve decompression and inner body cage placement. The MRI confirms that there is a multiple time recurrent disc herniation right side L5S1. What is the starting hemoglobin? The patient's starting hemoglobin is 11 and we have an active type in cross for her. In addition to this, she has received vancomycin, one gram IV prior to the procedure. She also has a history of congestive heart failure, and so I'll be monitoring her fluid status carefully. She has adequate IV access and blood available for the case. Does circulating nurse have any concerns? All equipment and implants are in the room and sterile. Does neuromonitoring have any concerns? All needles are placed and verified for EMG monitoring. There are some intermittent spontaneous spikes from the right gastrocnemius muscle. If anyone has a concern during the case, please let me know. Okay, let's get started. This is a timeout for patient Jane Doe, number 12345678, date of birth May 10th, 1965. She has no allergies. 
and the patient is in the supine position with the head turned to the left. Today we are going to do a right frontal craniotomy for tumor resection along with motor mapping. Here is the site marking. You can see it on the right side of the head. And this is where we're going to do the craniotomy. Yes, consent states right frontal craniotomy for tumor resection with motor mapping. For antibiotics, we are going to use cefazolin, one gram intravenously. Please also give four milligrams of Decadron and one gram of Keppra. I confirm that I've given one gram of cefazolin within the last hour to the patient, and I ensure I will give four milligrams of Decadron and one gram of Keppra. Will the patient require any additional brain relaxation, such as mannitol or hyperventilation today? No additional brain relaxation is needed. The case is going to take approximately five hours. We don't expect much in the way of blood loss. The critical step in this case will be that after we open the dura, we're going to map the motor cortex and then select a safe corridor to approach and remove the tumor. Implants for this case include a plating system, hemostatic agents, a dural substitute, bone cement, and a subcutaneous drain. We have all of these items in the room and there is no equipment concerns or issues with sterility. Postoperatively, patient will be going to neurointensive care unit. Anesthesia, do you have any concerns? This patient has a history of congestive heart failure, so I will be monitoring her fluid status carefully during the case. She has adequate IV access, and we have an adequate type and screen for blood products. Good. Does neuromonitoring have any concerns? All needles are placed and verified for left-sided motor mapping from face to foot. OK, team, we're going to proceed. If anyone has any concern during this case, please let me know immediately. At the end of the procedure, before the patient leaves the operating room, the surgical team conducts a short debriefing to review the procedure that just took place and how this will affect postoperative status of the patient. She did very well. The surgeon discusses estimated blood loss, deficits that may have occurred during surgery, immediate concerns, and any management issues. The anesthesiologist reviews relevant lab values, overall fluid status, medications that were administered, and any problems encountered during the course of anesthesia. The nurse confirms and communicates surgical counts, implants used, and any specimens obtained for handling. The neurophysiologist reports on the results of the monitoring that took place during the surgery and any changes that may have occurred. The nurse reports to his or her counterpart in the neuro ICU about the course and outcome of surgery. After surgery, the surgical team transports the patient to the neuro ICU. The patient had an where the handoff takes place to the neuro ICU team. Direct physician to physician sign out takes place, as well as communication between nurses. So we'll continue to watch her fluid status carefully, give her Lasix as needed. Every patient has the right to receive the safest care possible in every surgical setting. To ensure this, every healthcare provider must collaborate to create a culture of patient safety. By following the procedures demonstrated in this video, we can minimize errors, reduce risk, and improve patient outcomes. Your commitment to teamwork will result in the highest quality of care.